I am the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now, the whistler's strange story, Traveling Companion. Standing in the lobby of the Hotel Continental in Pisa, Italy, with a group of some 20 other tourists, Clara Marshall, age 25, and attractive enough to draw attention anywhere, was smiling quietly to herself, and with good reason. Yes, Clara, for the past eight months you've handled things perfectly, haven't you? Wanted by the Chicago police for your part in a series of minor swindles, you slipped out of town and covered your tracks so successfully they lost all trace of you. Some weeks later, in a Los Angeles bookstore, you casually made the acquaintance of elderly, wealthy Harriet Wilson and took full advantage of this chance meeting, didn't you, Clara? Yes. Now you're not only her trusted employee, but her secretary and traveling companion on a tour of Europe and waiting on a foggy Italian morning to accompany her on a guided tour of Pisa. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm forced to cancel today's tour. Too foggy. Oh, but Guy, the streetcars are running. You needn't drive the bus. Sorry, Miss Marshall. It would be impossible to take a group this size through the foggy city on streetcars. Too dangerous. But we don't plan to come through this city again. And Miss Wilson had so counted on seeing the Leaning Tower. Isn't that right, Harriet? Well, yes, I had looked forward to but it. you know I... we're leaving this afternoon. Please, Guide, won't you reconsider? Uh, Miss Marshall, in the interest of the group as a whole, I... Uh, I am sorry, really. Oh, really, I don't... Why? Pardon me, miss. What? I couldn't help overhearing. It seems a shame that fellow American visitors who are so interested in seeing historical places should not see them. <laughs> it looks as if not much is going to be done about well, that. Well, I was just going to suggest... Oh? ...that I'd be glad to take you to the Leaning Tower. It really isn't far from here. Oh, would you? Well, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it, Harriet? Well, uh, why, yes, it would. Good. Let's lose no time, then. This way, ladies. <laughs> You smile, don't you, Clara? Leaving the hotel and boarding the crowded streetcar. As you steal a glance at the stranger, you notice that he's studying you, too, very closely, as if memorizing every detail of your appearance. And Harriet is quite excited about the whole adventure as the car rattles along the street. Clara, just think of our going through the streets of Pisa, in the fog and on a streetcar. <laughs> it's so thrilling. <laughs> it was nice of you to offer to escort us. It means a lot to see places we've seen in pictures so often. I want to go to the top of the tower and look down. Yes, they say that's where Galileo proved his theory about weights falling at the same rate of speed, you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> I just love to try dropping something. <laughs> uh, Ladies, I'm sorry, but I won't be able to take you to the tower today after all. What? Well, you said it wasn't far. I'm sorry, but it's unavoidable. Come, let's get off at the next stop. It seems we have no choice. And in this fog. You'll be all right. Get off at the third stop in the returning car, and you'll be right at your hotel. We'll remember. I'm sorry. It's just that I have a most important engagement, and it's later than I realized. It just isn't my day. Thanks anyway, Mr. Hungate. Raymond Hungate. I'll try and see you later. Goodbye for now. As the three of you step from the streetcar, Raymond slips something into your pocket and quickly puts his fingers to his lips to silence you, and suddenly he's gone into the fog. As you look around, you notice two men who left the streetcar just before it pulled away hurry off in the same direction Raymond took. You feel sure they're following him, don't you, Clara? Harriet seems concerned only with watching for a returning car and is relieved as it appears, and you're soon back at your hotel. Oh, at last. Oh, this hotel room looks good to me. My, now, why would he offer to take us to the Leaning Tower and then deliberately leave us stranded in the middle of this strange city in the fog? Well, I believe he meant to take us, but something he couldn't help caused him to leave. Mm, perhaps you're right. <laughs> 
<laughs> now that we're back safe and sound, I'll admit it was a thrill. And he was nice looking, wasn't he? <laughs> yes. And it seemed he was going to be an interesting guide. Now, he was an American, but seemed to know his way around here in this foreign land. I wonder if... Harriet, I believe it's best not to discuss this with the others on the tour. Oh? Uh, well, maybe you're right. Well, they'd have the laugh on us if they knew the details. Yes. Let's admit we didn't get to the tower, but forget the rest. Hmm? You're right, my dear. Hmm. Well... I wonder what the others are doing now. Oh, probably playing bridge. Why don't you go down and see if they have enough for full tables? I believe I will. Uh, won't you come along? Uh, not right now. But let's keep this our secret. Hmm? Uh -huh. Between you and me, I believe we'll see Mr. Raymond Hungate again. Oh, I do hope so. <laughs> My, isn't this romantic? Wouldn't it be something if you met your future husband here in Italy? On a foggy day. Oh, Harriet, <laughs> you're going overboard. It's time you joined your friends. All right, but I like the idea anyway. <laughs> You'll join us soon, dear. In a little while, Harriet. Uh -huh. Yes. You feel relieved when the door finally closes, don't you, Clara? And you cross the room quickly. Get Raymond's package from the pocket of your coat. You unwrap it, open the box carefully, and gasp as you view its contents. A necklace, a diamond necklace. You're startled, aren't you, Clara? And you wonder if the diamonds in the necklace are real. It seems unlikely that a perfect stranger would entrust you with something so valuable. But after the tour moves on to the city of Rome, you manage to leave Harriet for a short time and seek out a reliable-looking jewelry store. I want to see if the clasp on a necklace is all right. I'll be glad to help you, miss. Uh -huh. uh, here it is. Oh, my. How very beautiful. It's so well-designed. Worth many thousands of American dollars, eh? I suppose. <laughs> ah, but it is, miss. I know. A very valuable piece. Uh, the clasps seem all right? Mm, one moment. Uh, yes. Yes, it seems in perfect order. But it is well to be careful. Oh, thank you so much. You see, my, uh, my aunt wanted to wear it tomorrow evening, but wanted to be sure that it would be safe. I understand. Um, could I show you anything while you're here? <laughs> Not now, thank you. But what you tell me about the necklace is most reassuring. Clara, events have conspired to bring you luck, haven't they? Unexpectedly, a man named Raymond Hungate, escorting you to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, suddenly found a reason to leave you, but left a valuable diamond necklace in your coat pocket. Now in Rome, you find yourself thinking about the two determined-looking men who were following Mr. Hungate, and you realize that if by chance they caught up with him, the necklace will remain yours. But shortly after leaving the jewelry shop, you suddenly become aware of someone walking at your side. You look up quickly and recognize the man you met in Pisa, Raymond Hungate. He speaks low as you near a small basement restaurant. Would you like some refreshments, Miss Marshall? After all, we have something important to discuss. All right. I think this should prove an interesting place. Table for two, please. This way. Now, how about that one back in the corner? Very good, sir. Oh, thank you. For now, we'd uh, just like some coffee. Perhaps something else later on. Very good, sir. Well, have you been enjoying your trip since you were so rudely left in the fog in Pisa? Yes, but no thanks to you. I apologize. It was unforgivable to leave you stranded, but believe me, it was most necessary. So I gathered. Did your two friends that followed you off the streetcar catch up with you? No. No, thanks to the fog, they didn't. And I want to know, I, I appreciate your cooperation. Oh, think nothing of it. Uh, your coffee, sir. Thank you. Uh, were you satisfied that the diamonds were real? I noticed you were having the jeweler look the necklace over. And just making sure the clasp was in good condition. You would have felt rather foolish if the clerk had recognized that necklace as a stolen one. 
Is it? Could be. Or hadn't you guessed? But if you had known, you would, of course, have taken it to the authorities. No. No, I've thought about it, and then I thought about something else. Uh -huh. How would you like a partner? Did you say partner? Yes, don't be so overwhelmed. You already have one, you know. Otherwise, I'd have turned the necklace over to the police. You're right. You see, it could be uh, a convenient setup. If you're interested in stolen or black market jewelry, you'll sooner or later be suspected. Perhaps your room and luggage searched. Eventually, you'll be caught. Yes, that isn't a very pretty picture, is I'm it? I'm serious. If someone were to take the jewels and keep them for you, someone who wouldn't be suspected, someone, say, who's just uh, on a sightseeing tour, wouldn't your work be easier? I'm beginning to see your point. However, what about your traveling companion? She seems quite a, a chatterbox. Harry? <laughs> She'd be an asset. She's already set up a storybook romance for us. I'm sure she'd keep quiet about our seeing one another from time to time. Perhaps, given the story that you're on some dangerous secret mission. Oh. Well, the plan might have some advantages. And how do I know I can trust two women? Haven't you already found out? For my part, I can use some extra income. I'm getting somewhat fed up playing nursemaid to Harriet Wilson. Well, I'll have to give it some thought. Meanwhile, do you want me to keep the necklace for you? Why, yes. You might as well, partner. <laughs> I thought so. And don't worry about Harriet. I'll keep her happy. Clara, my dear. I can't tell you how glad it makes me to know that you found such an exciting and adventurous friend. <laughs> he is nice. Nice? Oh, he's wonderful. And to think he's in the Foreign Secret Service for our government. Oh, shh, not so loud. Oh, uh, sorry, dear. It could mean his life. You know what people found out about that. He, he shouldn't even have told me. Oh, now, don't worry, Clara. I'll be careful. You can count on that. <laughs> Thanks. But imagine meeting such a thrilling man here in a foreign land. He falls in love with you and eventually... Wedding bells. Harriet, please. <laughs> I'll admit Raymond is fascinating, and I'm pleased with his attentions, but... Well, he hasn't asked me yet. Oh, but he will. This young man's in love with you. And you're in love with him, too. I can tell. <laughs> I'm afraid you have spring fever, Harriet. <laughs> oh, you, you've been a changed person since you met him. You always were pleasant and nice to me, but, but now you seem to be uh, up in the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am a little, but anyway, we keep this to ourselves. Oh, huh? yes, you can count on me. <laughs> Things are going smoothly, aren't they, Clara? You've made Harriet believe you and Raymond are deeply in love, and you're sure she will never question any of your meetings with him. You and Harriet accompany the others on the various tours of Rome in the nearby country. But you also manage appointments with Raymond frequently. From time to time, he adds other pieces of jewelry to his uh, collection, and he seems pleased with the arrangement that you suggested. Then one day, as your stay in Rome is drawing to a close, you approach the back booth of a little cafe where you've made your last appointment with Raymond before leaving for Naples. Oh, oh, Clara, I, I didn't see you come in. You're slipping, Raymond. I thought you must always be on guard. I have no worries. Even if accused, I have no loot for anyone to find. Not today. Mm. Uh, you seem very absorbed mm. in that letter you're reading. Is it from the folks back home? Hardly. But don't be so inquisitive. Partners have a right to share, remember? Besides, I noticed it's from the Rocco Jewelry Company in Naples. You're to meet someone. Fast reader, aren't you? I'm a smart kid. Perhaps. But don't get too smart for your own good. Could I, darling? Here. Read the letter if you're so interested. Hmm. An appointment in Naples day after tomorrow at 11 p.m. Isn't that a bit late? Not for a friend. Friend. The kind that exchanges gems for greenbacks? The lady is a genius. It adds up. Appointment at 11 at night in Naples. A friend. This man handles all of your merchandise, doesn't he? Well, you're giving the answers. But I'll give you credit, Clara. You're usually right. We haven't discussed shares. How do I come in? 
You'll get what's coming to you all right. 50-50? Now, that'd be real nice, wouldn't it? There are some real nice jewels I've been carrying around. Now, how about my share, 50-50? That's a bit high. Partners, though. Well? <sighs> you drive a hard bargain, Clara. But you do know the answers. I'll be on the same train for Naples that you are day after tomorrow. See you then. Interesting, isn't it, Clara? When you return to the United States, you'll be a rich woman. The jewels Raymond has accumulated are worth a small fortune. And it shouldn't be long until you receive your share. Raymond admits he has an appointment with a man named Rocco in Naples to make the exchange. The jewels or a sum of money beyond your dreams. Two days later, you're on the train en route to Naples. An hour or so before you're due to reach Naples, you knock softly on the door of Raymond Hungate's compartment. Oh, Clara, come in. Anyone see you? Of course not. Bring the stuff in your purse? Yes. <laughs> they laughed when I bought this purse, that I didn't need any more luggage, but it has come in handy. <laughs> Look at them sparkle. Yeah, pretty. Beautiful. Just think, how much would you say? Uh, $50,000 for little Clara? Well, Rocco will want a commission, mm. but they'll probably bring about $75,000. Not bad for a few weeks' work. Not at all. And even $37,500, slightly more than my usual income. Uh... Clara, we might as well understand each other. What? You've had some good ideas, and you've been very helpful. Oh, thank you, darling. You can get in the way, and you take too much for granted. Oh, come now, smile when you say that. Why? Clara, the uh, game is over. I'm about ready to cash in, and I don't need any excess baggage. You're joking. Look, you don't mean to... Can't you figure the picture this time, Clara? We're almost into Naples. Your body can be found by the railroad track. By the time you're identified, I'll be in Naples, have the dough, and be on the boat for the good old USA. Don't be ridiculous. You'd be caught in a minute. What about Harriet? Well, you've taken care of that. Harriet will only be able to tell them what she understands. The job I have is very dangerous. But somehow you must have been killed by the man I was tracking down, or perhaps by accident. <laughs> After all, she thinks we're so much in love. Don't be a fool, Raymond. Put that gun away. Stand near the window, Clara. When the next train whistle sounds... Put it away! I'll... You... you grab at Raymond's arm. Try to seize the gun as the two of you struggle. You look at Raymond Hungate, slumped on the seat. Try to realize that you've killed him. You listen, expecting to hear people come clamoring into the compartment. But no one does. You realize that your struggle and the gunshot occurred during the outside noise, and that even as Raymond planned it, no one heard a thing. You look around the compartment, open the window and toss the gun out. Then you get Raymond's letter into your purse. And of course, most important of all, you take all the gems. And now, certain that there's not a trace to suggest you're having been with Raymond, you quickly return to your own compartment. Oh, Clara, back so soon. I was just writing some postcards. Well, that's nice. Well, I'm surprised Mr. Hungett would let you leave so soon. Hmm. Oh, you seem quiet, dear. Is something wrong? I'd... I, I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, come now. Have you had a quarrel? <laughs> Please, Harriet, let's not discuss it. But, Clara, I thought he was about to propose. There's not going to be any wedding. I can assure you I never want to see Raymond Hungate again. Oh, dear. Oh, now, now, you'll feel better tomorrow, Clara. No, uh, I'm through. In fact, Harriet, let's... Let's get everything together so that when we get to Naples, we can get off the train right away. Take a cab right to the hotel and, and not wait for the rest of the tour. But Clara... No, I mean it, Harriet. Like I said, I'm through with Raymond Hungate forever. Well, Clara, it's over, isn't it? Complete. As you hurry from the station, pretending that you want to avoid Raymond Hungate, knowing that his body is waiting to be discovered in his compartment. You're certain, too, that you left no trace of your having been there at all. But you do have the jewels, safely put away in your purse. 
And you know from the letter Raymond showed you, you can sell them in Naples for currency. A great deal of it. To Raymond's business connection. The jeweler named Rocco. And since you're to sail for the United States soon, your future looks very promising, doesn't it? Then there's a knock at the door of your hotel suite. Yes? Miss Marshall? Clara Marshall? Yes. I represent the American consulate, Miss Marshall. Oh, well, surely our passports are in order. Oh, yes. I'm here on another matter. This is Police Chief Antrini. Police? But why? May we come in? Well, yes, of course, please do. Please, sit down. Who is it, Clara? A gentleman from the consulate and the chief of police, Harriet. Uh, this is my employer, Miss Wilson, gentlemen. How do you do, Miss Wilson? How do you do? Well, this visit is really quite flattering. You see, we are planning to leave for the States in a few days. Oh, we've had such a wonderful tour of the continent. Nice of you two gentlemen to drop in this way. I am afraid my business may prevent your departure, Miss Wilson. You see, there has been a murder. A murder? But who? A man named Raymond Hungate. Raymond Hungate? How terrible. Well, surely that there's some mistake. Uh, the police still have some checking to do, Miss Marshall. But Chief Antrini would like you to come down to his office. Oh, this is hard to believe. It, it, it's such a shock. We knew Mr. Hungate's job was uh, with the Secret Service, and it was very dangerous. Harriet, there, there may be some mistake. Oh, I do hope so. Anyway, I, I'll go along to, to identify him, if it is Raymond. Oh, Clara, you poor dear child. I'm sure you misunderstand, Miss Wilson. Chief Antrini is arresting Miss Marshall on suspicion of murder. Well, that's preposterous. You've no reason whatsoever to suspect me. I think we have. Well, we found Hongate's body in a compartment of a train that had just arrived in Naples. It'd been shot, and the murder weapon is missing, as well as his own identification papers. It's very interesting, Chief Antrini, but I fail to see where it concerns me. Uh, perhaps it doesn't, Miss Marshall. All we are certain of is that Raymond Hungate had an appointment with a man named Rocco this evening to dispose of some stolen jewels. Hungate thought that Rocco was a fence. Actually, Rocco was working with the police. Well, I still don't understand what all this has to do with me. Uh, nothing. Unless you have the jewels. If you do, that is all we need for a conviction. If you do not, I'm sure you will not mind our searching your belongings. Uh, suppose we start with your purse? No, you have no right to search me while I hardly knew this man, Hungate. Oh, but you did. You see, we found this card in his compartment. It'd been slipped under the door. Oh, read it, Miss Marshall. Dear Mr. Hungate, I'm sure you and Clara have just had a lover's quarrel and that everything will work out all right. We'll be staying at the Imperial Hotel in Naples, Harriet Wilson. Harriet, why? I couldn't help it, Clara. You were such a romantic couple. I just couldn't let you break up. Now, Miss Marshall, your purse, please. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the whistler... Betty Lou Gerson, John Stevenson, Norma Varden, Byron Kane, and Marvin Miller. The Whistler, directed by George W. Allen, with music by Wilbur Hatch, is produced under the supervision of Ed Bloodworth and transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This evening's story was by Winifred Henson. The Whistler was entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Whistler, whose strange story you have just heard, will be back next week with another tale from his never-ending fire. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.